Good morning. Rise up in hope today. It's a brand new day full of mercy, full of possibilities, full of miracles, signs and wonders. We have been studying gifts and I had no idea where we were going to go this morning and early in the morning I woke up hearing the gift of being born again. And so I said, well, alrighty then, Lord, let's go there today. So we are going to be talking about the gift of being born again. What does that mean, actually? So if you will, turn with me to John, John chapter 3. There was a man named Nicodemus who asked that very question. Starting in verse 1, my subtitle says, Nicodemus visits Jesus at night. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jewish Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to the flesh but spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sounds, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus. And do you not understand these things? I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen. But still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the son of man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man will be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. The study application says so much, and I'm going to try and wrap it up in our devotional today. In the 3 1 study app, it says Nicodemus was a Pharisee and a member of the ruling council. The Pharisees were a group of religious leaders whom Jesus and John the Baptist often criticized for being hypocrites. These are the religious guys. They know a lot, but they don't live a lot out. Do you know any religious people? Most Pharisees were intensely jealous of Jesus because he undermined their authority and challenged their views. But Nicodemus was searching and he believed that Jesus had some answers. A learned teacher himself, he came to Jesus to be taught. No matter how intelligent and well-educated we are, we must come to Jesus with an open mind and a heart so he can teach us the truth about God. Nicodemus came to Jesus personally, although he could have sent one of his assistants. He wanted to examine Jesus for himself to separate fact from rumor. I love that about Nicodemus. He wanted the answers because he was smart. He was a wise man. And so he sought him out for himself. And I pray that there are many that will seek, seek Jesus out for himself. I did that. I wanted to meet him personally, so I began a search for him. Perhaps Nicodemus was afraid of what his peers, the Pharisees, would say about his visit, so he came after dark. Do you think Jesus minded? I don't think it bothered Jesus one minute that he came after the dark. What he was pleased with was that he was searching for him. 
Later, when he understood that Jesus was truly the Messiah, he spoke up boldly in his defenses. In John 7, 50 and 51, it says, Like Nicodemus, we must examine Jesus for ourselves. Others cannot do it for us. Then if we believe he is who he says he is, we will want to speak up for him. What did Nicodemus know about the kingdom? From the Bible, because he was a Bible scholar, so he knew the Old Testament. From the Bible, he knew it would be ruled by God, it would be restored on earth, and it would incorporate God's people. Jesus revealed this to a devout Pharisee that the kingdom would come to the whole world, not just the Jews, and that Nicodemus wouldn't be a part of it unless he was personally born again. This was a revolutionary concept. The kingdom is personal, not national or ethic, and its entrance requires requirements are repentance and a spiritual rebirth. Jesus later taught that God's kingdom has already begun in the hearts of believers, Luke 17, 21. It will be fully realized when Jesus returns to judge the world and abolish evil forever, Revelations 21 and 22. Now, the study app says about the water and the spirit part, as we read in verse 5 and 6, of water and spirit could refer to, number one, the contrast between physical birth, which is water, and spiritual birth, which is spirit, or number two, being regenerated by the spirit and signifying that rebirth by Christian baptism. The water may also represent the cleansing action of God's Holy Spirit, Titus 3, 5. Nicodemus undoubtedly would have been familiar with God's promises in Ezekiel 36, 25, and 26. Jesus was explaining the importance of a spiritual rebirth, saying that people don't enter the kingdom by living a better life, but by being spiritually reborn. Spiritually reborn today, friends. And I want to read something. I want to go to now... 1 Corinthians chapter 2, beginning in verse 10. And I just want to share with you thoughts on understanding things spiritually and how we can't do that unless we're born again. Because with a rebirth comes Holy Spirit. A born again follower of Jesus uh, receives Jesus, and when we receive Jesus, Holy Spirit comes. It's a three-person package deal when we get born again. God, Jesus, and Holy Spirit. So now let's read from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, beginning in verse 10. It says, But God has revealed it to us by His Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of man except the man's spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. We have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God that we may understand. This is why we can understand spiritual things, because God who is spirit is inside of us. It says that we may understand what God has freely given to us. This is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, expressing, expressing spiritual truths in spiritual words. The man without the Spirit does not accept the Spirit that comes from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. And he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual man makes judgment about all things, but he himself is not subject to any man's judgment. For he has known the mind of the Lord, that the Lord may instruct him, because we have the mind of Christ. When we have spiritual born-again experiences, when we are born again and the Holy Spirit comes, then the Holy Spirit then leads us and guides us and we can be set free. This is so important to understand as a believer in Christ. And here it says in the study app, the deep things of God refers, refers to God's unfathomable nature and his wonderful plan. Jesus' death and resurrection and to the promise of salvation revealed only to those who believe 
that what God says is true. Those who believe in Christ's death and resurrection and put their what? Their faith in him will know all they need to know to be saved. This knowledge, however, can't be grasped by even the wisest people in the world unless they accept God's message. All who reject God's message are foolish. This is God speaking this. No matter how wise the world thinks they are, they are foolish because they will not understand the spiritual things that God has for us to understand to be overcomers. It says Paul's words are authoritative because the source was the Holy Spirit. Paul was not merely giving his own personal views or his own personal impression of what God has said. Under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he wrote the very thoughts and the words of God. And God says so, so it is true. It says non-Christians cannot understand God and they cannot grasp the concept that God's Spirit lives in believers. Don't expect most people to approve of or understand your decision to follow Christ. Those are truth words right there. Don't expect most people to approve of you or understand you and your decision to follow Christ. It seems silly to them. Of course, they don't have Holy Spirit inside of them. We talked about that yesterday, and I just really feel so thankful that it's being reiterated today by Holy Spirit. When and with the lines of communication broken, he or she won't be able to hear what God is saying to him. So unless we are born again, we cannot hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us. It will not make sense. And there was another portion of scripture I wanted to share that I actually read yesterday. It was, it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and it begins in verse 6. The subtitle says, Wisdom from the Spirit. We do not, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. No, we speak of God's secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden and that God designed for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understand it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for those who love him and allow Holy Spirit inside of them to reveal the hidden things. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. Verse 11, for who among men knows the thoughts of man except the man's spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. We have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we may understand what God has freely given us. This is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom, but words taught by the spirit, expressing spiritual truths in spiritual words. The man without the spirit does not accept these things that comes from the spirit of God. They are foolishness to him. He can't understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Can't say that enough. If you're not born again, then you're not going to understand the things of God. So it is a gift. To be born again is a gift. And it, it gets me so excited. And I am so thankful that I am a born again, spirit filled believer because I get to have the secrets. You get to have the secrets. And I wrote down, so how can we become born again? When, How can we become born again, friends? And share this with your friends that maybe are asking questions. It doesn't make sense to me. I can't go back into my mother's womb. No, of course not. It's birth of the spirit. How do we become born again? When we respond to God's offer of forgiveness and eternal life through his son, Jesus Christ, that's how we become born again. When Jesus is Lord, Holy Spirit comes and changes us. And at that moment, we become born again. And the process begins. Uh, I have written down a prayer, prayer model for you. But you have your own words. If this is something that makes sense to you, and maybe you have to push the reset button and listen to this again, 
I tried to be as uh, clear as I could, yet I'm still human. For me, being born again allows me into God's world. I want to be in God's world. I want my three best friends, God, Jesus, and Holy Spirit, to make sense of his Bible to me. And through the Spirit, I can learn. I can, I can get these nuggets. And so I want that for myself, my family members, the whole world. I really do. Because it, it is the most glorious gift I can be given is a born again, renewed spirit. And so the prayer model is, thank you, Jesus, for raising, rising from the dead to give me life, according to John 14, 6. I'm asking you to come into my heart by your Holy Spirit to lead and live in me. Thank you, Father, that as I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord, Holy Spirit, you come too, and I become born again. It's just the way it is because of your great love, oh God. And I thank you that I'm set free from sin. I'm set free from eternal hell. I, eternity in heaven is mine. And I have been set free by your truth, according to John 8, 32. And I receive the gift of being born again. Born again. Yes, born again. I am born of the Spirit. And then I wrote down, I made a list, and I'm going to ask you to make a list, if you are a born-again believer, of the gifts that come from that gift. It's like this huge gift that trickles out so many other gifts. What's your list look like? Here's what mine looks like. The gifts that I've been given because I'm born again, an intimate relationship with God, Jesus, and Holy Spirit. Number two, eternal life. Number three, peace, joy, provision, destiny, purpose, wisdom, knowledge, discernment. Number four, free access to the throne of God. Number five and six, secrets and mysteries. We get to have God's secrets when we're born again and when we are filled with Holy Spirit. Power, love, forgiveness, a sound mind, and every promise in the word of God, the Bible. That's just my list. I don't know what your list is going to look like, but my list makes me want to rock it, <laughs> you know, elevator up, uh, be blasted from this worldly junk and garbage. I don't have to be, I can be in it, but I'm not of it because of being born again. So that's huge for me. I hope it's huge for you. I hope it makes your your spirit being re-energized, rejuiced for the day, regassed for this chaotic world. When you are born again, you can have peace in the storm. And I love that. I wouldn't trade that for anything. I remember my born again birthday in 1990. And, oh man, there's just nothing better. And I pray it for you, my friends. I pray it for every listening ear. God, what you gave to me, the gift of being born again, I give out the encouragement and the, the, uh, the want to for anybody listening. Being born again is the greatest gift you ever gave to me, God, because I got you, I got Jesus, and I got Holy Spirit, and I understand spiritual things. So thank you for that gift. I pray if anyone is listening to this message, that they become born again today. I pray for freedom in the name of Jesus Christ, and I bless you, Lord, for this devotion. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. I am praying for you. I am thankful for these devotionals. I am thankful for how grow, how much I'm growing, how deep my walk with the Lord is, is being stirred and growing, and I pray the same for you. Have a beautiful day. Amen.